Ahoy pirates, and welcome back to another Sea of Thieves video. Today, we're going to talk about the latest Sea of Thieves update, Haunted Shores, and how you can solo Flameheart's fearsome ghost fleet. To start things off, I want to let you know that there are actually two separate ghost fleet encounters. The first is a mission offered by the Order of Souls that is shorter and less treasure filled, something you can use to grind out your order reputation. The second event, which we are interested in, is the world event signified by Flameheart's head in the sky. Now, before sailing into battle against a horde of ghost ships, we should probably talk a bit about resources. In my experience, collecting vast amounts of resources before doing this event isn't required. Unlike the skeleton fleet battle, Rare has done an excellent job of providing floating resource barrels, as well as storage crates of the damned from destroyed ships. These resource crates usually contain 20 plus cannonballs and planks, and are easily visible in the water by floating spirits above them. If you navigate your ship well, and you land all your shots, resources shouldn't be an issue. This encounter will have you facing off against three types of galleons. A regular ghost galleon, which can be destroyed with three cannonball hits, a captain ship, which can be destroyed with ten cannonball hits, and finally the burning blade, which takes 25 cannonball hits. The location of the impacts makes no difference, so just be sure to land your shots. If you're curious, any cannibal type count as an impact. Firebombs, chain shots, blunder bombs, and even cursed balls. So, all those helm balls and barrel balls you collect, even though you know you're never going to use them, well, at least now they have a purpose. Just be sure to keep the ballast balls and the anchor balls, as those are extremely useful if you run into other players in this fight. You might be wondering if there are other ways besides cannons to damage these galleons. Well, I have you covered there as well. Harpoons pass right through. Throwables do nothing. Firing cats just makes them angry. And even powder kegs have no effect on these ghost ships. I even tried finding a use for bananas, but came up with nothing. Ramming the ghost ships does no damage to them, but causes significant damage to you. So be aware of your surroundings and avoid collisions as much as possible. So what should we expect from these galleons? Well, they will attack you with three different types of cursed cannonballs. The phantom cannonball, which does one medium sized hole. The flaming phantom cannonball that lights your ship ablaze and is more of a nuisance than a real threat. And the wraith ball, which will damage your ship with one large hole and two small holes, as well as knock your ship off course. Additionally, galleons are able to drop several powder kegs if you follow too closely behind them. These should be avoided at all costs, as they will severely damage your ship. Alright, so we have our resources figured out. We know what types of ships we're dealing with, and how to damage them. So let's get into the mechanics of the battle. In order to complete this event, you will have to defeat four waves of galleons. The first wave will consist of concentric rings of galleons circling in clockwise and counterclockwise directions. When you engage them, I recommend you stick to the outermost area of the event. This will greatly reduce the ability of these galleons to land shots on you, while still allowing for a quick retreat if needed. Follow the same direction as the closest galleon to you, and position yourself on the outside of their turning arc. This will allow you to land most of your shots before they will have any ability to return fire. Avoid moving too close to the island. As tempting as it might be, you can very easily become pinched between two or more ships, take significant damage, and sink very, very quickly. All the while, you're going to have to listen to Flameheart mock your terrible pirating skills. Once you have destroyed seven galleons, the remaining ships will vanish and be replaced by two groups of three ships. One ship in each of these groups will be a captain, signified by the Ashen Dragon logo on its sails. Take them out the same way you did as the previous wave. Stick to the outer edge, and pick them off one at a time. I should also note that these groups can teleport to new locations, so be extremely careful that they don't surprise you, or you're going to be hearing more mocking from Flameheart and nobody wants that. Also, if you're looking to maximize your gold income for this event, I suggest destroying the regular galleons first, and focus on the captain galleons second. When sunk, 
Captain Galleons drop a good amount of treasure. By clearing out the support ships first, it will allow you to collect the treasure in relative safety. After you destroy all the captain ships, the third wave will begin, and you will once again face concentric rings of individual galleons. You might want to keep an eye out for resource crates if you're running low on supplies. You will need a lot of cannonballs for the next wave. To defeat the last wave, all you need to do is destroy Flameheart's ship, and the others will vanish. But this will significantly reduce the amount of treasure you will receive for all your hard work. I personally recommend you utilize the same tactics already discussed. Take out the regular galleons first, followed by the captain ships so you can collect the loot. And finally, deal with the burning blade. Destroying the burning blade will provide you with a significant amount of treasure. A captain's skull of the damned and a cannonball crate of the damned containing a variety of wraith cannonballs, phantom cannonballs, and flaming phantom cannonballs. If you're wondering how much gold you can earn from this event, it greatly depends on your ability to grab all the treasure from all the destroyed captain ships, as well as the burning blade, and whether or not you're running a high level emissary. In my experience, collecting treasure from only the burning blade with no emissary net me 30,000 in gold. Having a level 5 order of souls emissary and collecting all of the treasure was closer to 100k in gold. Had I been a level 5 reaper, I suspect that would have been significantly more. Well, that's about it guys. I hope you find this video helpful. And if you do, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the seas.